welcome back let's continue with our series of anxiety disorder in this COVID-19 era that everybody is really stressed out that's why we are deliberating and discussing on anxiety disorders there are so many types of disorder so as we discuss them and we're going along you have to sort of um, try and check which one you think you are familiar with or which symptoms that you're having yourself and then you know the specific kind of type or the classification that you are in or the category that you are in if you know that is separation anxiety disorder and you're having the symptoms of um, inappropriate and excessive attachment when you are separated from somebody it goes bad you have phobic attacks you have panic attacks and all that then you know that your situation is different from the person with obsessive compulsive disorder so we are going through all the different types so you sort of um, pick the one that you think you've got the symptoms so that when you are reporting your case to your GP or to your psychologist or to your um, psych psychiatrist you know exactly what to say so that it's going to help them with their diagnosis so they won't sort of um, suffer or they won't go through hell when it comes to the, the tools that they'll be using to diagnose you because at least you know a little bit about what you are going through and you know a little bit about that particular type of anxiety disorder so that would be great so um, previous video um, as we continue the series we spoke about the um, separation anxiety disorder and um, we mentioned adults being roughly 7% um, um, sorry 4% of children and the statistics was 4% and the adults is 7% um, so there's a whole lot of people that go through that and it's very uncomfortable so we will talk about situational anxiety so you see there's a whole lot of difference differences in all these individual disorders so as we go along you will resonate with a particular one that maybe you'll be having some kind of symptoms but if it persists if it's very persistent if it's continuous if it lingers on for a period of time then you can obviously um, report it to your GP or see for professional assistance or support. Situational anxiety is caused by new situation. That's on page 108 of my book. Situational anxiety is caused by new situations or changing events. It can also be caused by various events that make the particular individual very uncomfortable so you see an event can trigger an anxiety so that is why we term it situational anxiety disorder so it means that if there is any sort of traumatic event or even if it's not traumatic if it's just an occasion that makes you worry that makes you uncomfortable it's a situational anxiety and when it's repeatedly coming in all the time with that symptoms and it's persistent as i always say and it's continuous it's intrusive it's edgy and it's really controlling then it means you have to have it checked out please get help if you know of a family member a wife a daughter a husband a son a colleague any member of you know your your, your immediate sort of surrounding any friend that you think goes through that whenever maybe we, we go to club this guy becomes very uncomfortable or whenever we go to the market this guy gets very uncomfortable or whenever we visit a friend 
it gets very uncomfortable. Or whenever a girlfriend comes in, he or she gets very uncomfortable. Or whenever, you know, they meet new people, they get uncomfortable. So that is a situational anxiety disorder. And when it's persistent, and it, 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 it tarries for a long period of time, then it means please get it checked out. Its occurrence is very common. Often, an individual will experience panic attacks or extreme anxiety in specific situations. So you see, the panic attacks what comes into play. So panic disorders comes into play. So when you go back, you can see that we have there's there's one here. Yes, as I as I mentioned, panic disorder. When you go back, you see the panic disorder. We've treated the panic disorder. So it's all mingled up, it's all intertwined, it's all boxed up. So when you are facing one problem, one, one, one issue comes into play as well. When there's another issue, the whole issue and other, other ones come into the picture. So you see, it's all kind of mixed together. So right now, you can see that this situation makes somebody panic. So we don't we don't take situations like that just you know just ignore it. We don't ignore cases like that. When it tarries, when it goes on for a longer period of time, it means there's a problem. And, and that problem needs to be to be attended to, needs to be sorted out, need management plan, need a care plan. So a situation that causes an individual to experience anxiety may not affect another individual at all. For example, some people become uneasy in crowds or tight spaces and they call it phobia. You know, I don't like, you know, spaces. I don't like small spaces. I, 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 I'm, they, they, have, they have a word they use. Um, I've forgotten about that. If I remember, I'm going to um, come out with that. So crowds or tight spaces or standing in a tightly packed line, say at the bank or a store register, may cause them to experience extreme anxiety, possibly a panic attack. Others, however, may experience anxiety when major changes in life occur, such as entering college, getting married, having children. You know, let me give you one example. When I was graduating um, at Greenwich University, that very particular day, I think I had a situational anxiety. But because it's a one-off, I was able to manage it. But if it had kept coming in, then it means I would have gone in for support. I would have gone in for help. That particular day, I was really having serious panic attacks. I was just not myself. I was having headaches. I was having all these symptoms, sweating, headaches, palpitation and all that. It was, it was like a big event for me, you know, me graduating. I don't know, but there's some kind of a overwhelming situation sort of dropped on me. And I would say that was a situational anxiety disorder at that time. But because it was just a one-off, an isolated case, just one occasion, and it never occurred again, because my second graduation, I didn't have that. So it means sometimes people go through that. Everybody goes through situational anxiety, one way or the other. If you are being attacked, you have that situational anxiety at that particular instant. But we are talking about when it becomes a disorder, it means it's persistent, it means it's intrusive, it means it's inappropriate, it means it's excessive. So you have all these blocks coming in. And timely as well, you, you have to add the time to wait because when it lasts for a long time, as we're talking about the persistency of it, when it's consistent, then it becomes a disorder. So you have to get it checked out. But from time to time, individuals get 
you know, attacks like that. You see? 